If you want smooth parts with intricate details, then this is the technology for you. But this technology is not known for producing parts with high strength. Stick around to find out why. Hello people of the internet and welcome back to the next episode of What is 3D Printing? My name's Ben Redwood and this week we're going to be talking about SLA, the original 3D printing technology. So as fun as it is to destroy parts, we should probably learn how they're also made. SLA is part of the VAT polymerization category. So why the name VAT polymerization? Well, the technology utilizes a VAT as well as lasers to cure photopolymer resin the polymerization process. To produce parts, VAT polymerization follows four main steps. Firstly, the build plate is positioned inside a tank of photopolymer resin. The build platform is positioned so that a very thin layer of resin covers the surface. A UV light source then scans the first layer of the part. Because photopolymers are sensitive to ultraviolet light, the resin is photochemically solidified. With VAT polymerization technology, the average layer height is about 100 microns, but they can go as low as 25 microns, much smaller than FDM. When a layer is finished, the platform moves down one layer height and a sweeper blade recoats the cured surface with a layer of uncured resin. The light source then solidifies this new layer and the process is repeated, slowly building the part up one layer at a time. Finally, after printing, the part is still not fully cured. If you're after the optimal mechanical properties for your part, you need to take it away for some post-processing under a UV light. But if you're not in a rush, you can put your parts in front of an open window and good old mother nature will do the job for you. Like I mentioned earlier, the two most common forms of VAT polymerization are stereolithography, SLA, and direct light processing, DLP. Both technologies produce parts in similar ways and, at the end, the parts are pretty much identical. The main difference that separates them out is the light source that's used to cure the resin. So, SLA is famous for being the original 3D printing technology. The term stereolithography itself was coined by Charles W. Hell in 1986, who patented the technology and used it to found the company 3D Systems, commercializing the process. The technology uses mirrors, known as galvanometers, to rapidly aim a laser beam across the build platform, curing and solidifying the resin as it goes along. DLP builds parts in a very similar way to SLA. However, DLP uses a digital light projector screen comprising of pixels to flash an image of each layer over the build platform all at once. As a result, DLP can generally produce parts faster than SLA. However, SLA is considered more accurate as the individual pixels of a DLP projector screen are sometimes visible on the part. Since these technologies are very similar and they produce parts which are almost indistinguishable, I'm going to use the term SLA for the rest of this video just to make things easier. So what are the important things to consider when trying to decide if SLA is the best 3D printing technology to produce your parts? After support removal and some post-processing, SLA parts have a very smooth surface, making the technology ideal for injection mold prototyping or visual models. Because of the small laser spot size and small layer height, SLA is perfect for designs that have fine intricate details, as well as parts that need a high level of dimensional accuracy. SLA technology is generally very scalable. Because the technology does not rely on heat to produce parts, it means that very large size printers can be produced with huge build volumes. It's not uncommon to see SLA printers produce full dashboards of cars or full size bumpers. SLA offers a vast range of materials, each specifically developed for different applications. Whether you want biocompatible materials for the dental industry, investment casting resins for jewelry, flexible materials, or materials as transparent as glass, there are plenty of options to choose from. SLA utilizes photopolymers, which are thermosets, to produce parts. And as a result, parts are brittle, as we saw earlier with our hammer test. Because of this, the technology is typically used for prototyping and not for load-bearing or functional parts. The other downside to photopolymers is that they are UV sensitive, meaning they degrade over time, particularly in the presence of direct sunlight. 
SLA printing almost always requires support material, which must be removed, more about this in a moment, and post curing to achieve the optimal material properties. And this all adds time and therefore cost to the overall printing process. So unlike FDM, parts are rarely able to be used straight off the build platform. There are three main things to consider when designing parts for SLA. Support, part orientation, and hollow sections. Let's talk about support first. Support structures are always required when printing with SLA. Support helps us to anchor our part onto the build plate and allows us to print overhangs. It also fights against curling. Curling is the equivalent of warping in FDM. SLA support structures are printed in the same material as the part and need to be mechanically broken away or cut off once printing is completed. Support structures usually leave a mark at the point of contact, which means if you want a perfectly smooth surface, some processing is required. And that brings us nicely into point two, part orientation. The part orientation of your design helps determine the location and amount of support material that's required. As a rule of thumb, if your design has important visual surfaces, it's a good idea to orientate it in the printer so that these surfaces are not in contact with any support material. A handy tip when optimizing the orientation of your SLA part is to position the part in the printer in such a way that the cross-sectional area of all the layers is reduced by as much as possible. On 3D Hubs, we've made a handy tool that allows you to define the cosmetic surface of your part before sending your designs to the manufacturing partner. The manufacturing partner can use this information to position the part in the printer so that no support material will be in contact with the surface you have selected. Finally, the last thing to consider is hollow sections. They minimize the amount of material used, making parts lighter and therefore faster and cheaper to produce. It's important to remember to make sure escape holes are a minimum of 4mm in diameter. Including them in areas where they are hidden is also a good rule to keep in mind. For example, in the base of the feet of a figurine. For a detailed set of rules to follow when designing parts for SLA, check out the link in the description below. SLA printers are generally placed into two camps, desktop or industrial. Desktop SLA printers, like the form labs here, are great general all-rounders. These types of printers use a range of standard materials and have a lower price tag, making them a great tool for prototyping or low-run production of smaller parts. Industrial printers are more common in areas where high precision or specialized materials are required. Think the medical or dental industries. One of the biggest success stories of 3D printing is hearing aids, with 97% of all hearing aids globally now produced by SLA printing. The whole 3D printing industry is now moving towards printers that can produce parts faster than ever before. The resin-based carbon printer claims to be able to produce parts 25 to 100 times faster than traditional SLA by continuously pulling the part out of the resin rather than printing one layer at a time. So let's wrap it up. What have we learned from this video? SLA is perfect for smaller parts that require intricate details or have a smooth surface, but they will be brittle, so keep that in mind. Part orientation and support structures will play a big impact on the surface finish of your part. And there are a lot of materials available in the desktop and industrial spaces. But if you want functional parts, make sure you look to SLS or FDM. In the next video, we're going to talk about powder bed fusion, or SLS, the best technology for producing strong, functional parts. This video is based on the 3D printing handbook. Subscribe to win yourself a copy, we'll be giving away 10 every week to new subscribers.